reflection of form I'm searching for a life that hasn't been there before Sweet light into the darkness Sweet light into my lungs Fill my soul deep as the ocean I'm reaching for your love And all that I can do is give it back to you I'm taking my old skin Made a new again All that I can do Is give it back to you You've taken my old skin And made it new again You have made me new A new creation A new A new creation Holy Spirit of an old deep Bring out the colors that my heart so to see Hello, New Creation Family Church. It's so good to be with you as we enjoy our 9 a.m. live service together. We wanna to thank you for tuning in right now because we value being together as a community. We have pastors and hosts who are with us here this morning. And so if you'd like to connect or you'd like to just say hi, then they would love to connect with you. There are links accompanying this video where you can do that. We pray that the Lord would really speak to you during the service and the worship. So let's jump right in and see what he'll do this morning. Good morning and welcome to our first celebration of 2021. Last Sunday, Gavin had the snow in the background. Today, I've got our nice warm African sun in the background. Well, we would love to 
give you a physical hug today or a physical high five, but I guess virtual hugs and virtual um, high fives will have to do. For those that are watching on YouTube, why don't you go to our live.newcreation.co.za and go to the comment section. We'd love you to say hello to us this morning so we can see who's joining us as we get ready to sing some worship songs. Our worship team hasn't been able to film this week, so we're going to use some songs that we played last year. So why don't you just prepare your heart as we glorify God at the beginning of this new year. what you say though the storms may come and the winds may blow I remain steadfast and let my heart learn when you speak a word it will come to pass great is your faithfulness to me your faithfulness to me from the rising sun to the setting saint I will praise your name great is 
is your faithfulness to me. God, from age to age, though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same. There's nothing you can't do, you're faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faith. strong and courageous as we face the uncertainty of this new year just as you instructed um, Joshua and the Israelites to be strong and courageous we too can be strong and courageous because of your presence that is with us your presence that goes before us and your presence that is with us so won't you Holy Spirit reveal your presence to us as we meet in our homes this morning and may we sense you um, being close to us in this time in Jesus name Amen well, we'd love to welcome anyone that is visiting with us for the first time. Um, you can, um, if you're joining us on our live.newcreation platform, you can click on the tab that says I'm new here. 
We'd love to find out more about you. Hopefully we can get back to some in-person services soon and there we would love to meet you in person. Well, we're going to be taking up our tithes and our offering now. The reason why I wanted to stand here today was to have our auditorium in the background. And for many of us that have been a part of this ministry for years, we'll remember when our church used to meet upstairs in U2, where our kids currently meet. And to my right, I remember having church meetings in a tent. And it's just amazing to see as the years go on, you can see physically what God has done in the ministry over the years. And sometimes we forget that the, the seeds that we sow, even if it's a small seed, it becomes part of the greater whole of New Creation Family Church's ministry where we're seeing lives impacted, we're seeing a, a younger generation impact. And it's important for us to stop for a moment and see God's goodness over the many years of Him building His church here in Robin Hill. So I want to thank you for the way you have faithfully sown in 2020. And I want to encourage you to continue with your giving um, in 2021 so we can see God continue to build His kingdom through this ministry. I also just want to just give you a heads up for what's happening in the next few weeks. As you heard this week, um, that we are under new uh, regulations with regard to our church celebrations. So we will be online for the time being. We will tell you when the regulations change and we can go back to in-person services. So yeah, next week we're going to have Keith Duplessis sharing a word from us. He's part of our Cotton Cluster Network and we're really looking forward to have him. He's in Port Elizabeth and online church enables us to invite some others around the country and around the world to share with us. And the following week, I'll be starting our new preaching series on the 17th of January. So it gives me some time to prepare for that. And then as we started 2020 with Habits of Grace, we want to encourage you to spend time in the Word, make that a daily habit. So what we're going to do is every week we're going to post um, some scripture verses for those that want to take up the challenge of either reading all of the New Testament through the year in chronological order or reading the entire Bible. We will put it on our website and we'll put it on our social media. Um, it is only a few minutes a day or a, or a few chapters a week. Um, but my challenge to you is to spend time in the Word. Self-feed, get into it. And, and we're going to start this year on the right foot and post um, scripture verses every week for you to do your daily reading. Well, it's my privilege this morning to welcome Mike Maria. He's going to share the word today. Mike is the CEO of our biggest ministry, the King School. Um, he's also one of our elders and he is a teacher. He loves teaching. He is a man of integrity. I've really uh, enjoyed getting to know Mike over the years as we've been serving together in this ministry. So won't you give a virtual hand clap as we invite Mike to come and share the word this morning. Welcome, Mike. Happy New Year, New Creation family. It's good to be with you on this first service of 2021. If you're watching on the first Sunday of the year, well done. You're off to a very good start for this year. Now, a new year usually brings renewed hope and optimism for a much better year and hopefully a better year than the one before. But I know optimism is difficult under current circumstances and especially with the new level three lockdown restrictions. Now, on Christmas Day, Pastor Paul preached a really great message on joy. And one of the things that stuck out for me the most in his message is that true joy is not dependent on circumstances. Because circumstances change, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. But true joy is not dependent on circumstances. The reality is, is that God's love and His faithfulness never change. And we should never judge God's love or His faithfulness towards us by current circumstances. As we begin 2021 together, I'd like to highlight two biblical truths and encourage two New Year's resolutions that I hope you can add to the New Year's resolutions that you've already made. So the first two points that I'd like to make is God is always good. The second one, circumstances always vary. Then the two new year's resolutions that I'd like us to, to add to our list are, seek God in all circumstances and live your purpose through all circumstances. So let's begin with the first one, God is always good. Now last Sunday, Pastor Malign reminded us in her message on the desires of your heart, to be proactively and intentionally going out and tasting to see that the Lord is good. 
Because if you taste and see, you will find that the Lord is good. James 1 verse 16 says, So don't be misled, my brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the he heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. God is good and everything that is good comes from Him. Now, I enjoy regularly going out for a run to keep fit, and I usually go out at sunset or sunrise because that's the coolest time of the day. But one of the things that I always marvel at is that each and every single day, God gives us a brand new, different, but equally amazing sunset and sunrise. And each day when I'm out running, I'm able to appreciate the goodness of God. But I had a thought one day when I wasn't out running, and it was sunset, and I realized even though I'm not out enjoying it, it's still there. And sometimes God's goodness is there, but we aren't necessarily enjoying it. And I want to encourage you to go out and look for God's goodness because you will find it. Uh, he's given us gifts in the sky, in the sea, in the love that can be shared between people, the cuteness of babies. All you have to do is look and you'll see the goodness of God everywhere. Jesus said in Matthew 7 verse 7, Keep on seeking and you will find. And if you seek God's goodness, you will find it. Unfortunately, we live in a world where people and often journalists go around looking for all the negative, all the bad news, and they bombard us with it. And so we have to be intentional about limiting our amount of time on media and, on the, uh, and watching the news and be intentional about looking for God's goodness. When we look at God's creation, we understand why David wrote in the Psalms, the heavens proclaim the glory of God, the skies this, uh, the skies displays craftsmanship. Day after day they continue to speak. Night after night they make him known. If you look, you will see God's goodness is being declared everywhere. He is always speaking and he's always giving, but we are only sometimes listening and only sometimes receiving. Now, on one particular day when I went out to run and I thought I was going to enjoy a beautiful sunset because it was around that time of day. But on that particular day, there happened to be a heavy, thick gray cloud. And as I was out running, I thought to myself, this is really sad. There could have been a beautiful sunset, but this cloud is blocking the beauty that God has. And I realized that often circumstances can block God's goodness or block us from experiencing God's goodness. But that doesn't mean it's not there. Because I remembered one day when I had gone for a flight, we were, we were going somewhere and, and as uh, on that particular day, it had been a rainy, cloudy day. And as we took off in the airplane, we went through the rain and then went through the cloud and eventually got on top of the cloud. And when we were on top of the clouds, it was perfectly sunny. Because even if there is cloud, the sun is still there. Even though when you're on the face of the earth, you can't see it. If you're able to climb a very tall mountain or get into an airplane, you'll see that the sun is still there. So not seeing it doesn't mean that it's not there. Now, an interesting question. Why does God allow physical circumstances to block his physical goodness? Now, that's perhaps a question for the real theologian, so I'm not going to attempt to answer it theologically, but I've just got some thoughts I'd like to share. Yes, it's sad when a dark, cloudy day prevents us from seeing God's beautiful sunset, but it's also the cloud that brings the blessing of rain, that gives us beauty in the plants and flowers. And secondly, I do believe that sometimes when we are no longer experiencing God's physical goodness, it's an opportunity for us to experience His spiritual goodness, which is far greater and far better than His physical goodness. Before Jesus left this earth, and He was here with, with humans and with people for a period of time, He was physically here, and then He left. And He said this just before He left. He said, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give you is a gift the world cannot give you. So don't be troubled or afraid. True, and I, I want to say this. True peace cannot come from the physical. And yes, it's, it's wonderful to, to enjoy a beautiful sunset next to a river and experience some physical peace. But true peace comes from God and is perfected when it's not possible in the physical. Jesus went on in, in, in John 16 verse 7 to say, But in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Because if I don't, 
the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. Jesus was saying his physical comfort and, and the power from his physical presence needed to go so that the spiritual comfort and power from the Holy Spirit would come. Physical support needs to end so that we can stop relying on it and start relying on spiritual support. Now, those of you who, are, who have studied uh, psychology or education will be very familiar with the Swiss developmental psychologist Piaget and his theories on child development. One of his theories is that of object permanence. And he discovered that around two years of age, children grasp this concept of object permanence. Before that, they think anything that's not with them currently ceases to exist when it's removed from them. But from about two years, they start to realize that even if something's gone, been removed from this room, it still exists somewhere else. So in one version of his experiment, Piaget would hide a toy under a blanket and then observe to see if the infant would search for the object. Some of the infants would appear confused or upset by the loss while other infants would instead look for the object. Piaget believed the children who were upset that the toy was gone lacked the understanding of object permanence, while those who searched for the toy had reached this de developmental milestone of object permanence. As Christians, we also need to mature and know that God and His goodness continue to exist even when we are not currently physically experiencing them. And if you search for him spiritually, you will always find him. The next point I'd like to uh, highlight is that circumstances always vary. I think we, we, we all know this. In John 16 verse 33, Jesus said, I've told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Jesus never promised physical comfort. In fact, he warned of physical trials and promised of spiritual comfort. Every one of us has trials and every single great person in the Bible went through many physical trials and, and difficult circumstances from Moses to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, King David, the apostle Paul and even Jesus himself went through very, very difficult circumstances. But one thing they all had in common, they knew God's spiritual goodness all the time. Our physical state does not have to determine our spiritual state. And I want to just uh, illustrate this with two scenarios from the Bible. The one is Matthew 27. We all know uh, when G Judas was just about to betray G Jesus. And Judas had gone to the Jewish leaders and he had said to them, I'll help you locate Jesus and identify him so that he can be arrested and then you can do with him whatever you you see fit. And Judas had negotiated that they would give him money in exchange for him doing this for them. Now, have you ever wondered why did Judas go and negotiate with them? I, I will assume that he thought if he got some money, he would be happy. He would find some joy in that money. And so he went and negotiated this with them. The sad part is that after he received the money, instead of finding joy, he was filled with such despair and regret that the Bible tells us he went away and hung himself. So the joy he thought he would get from improved circumstances, some financial wealth, actually had the opposite effect. And I want to contrast that now with the disciples in Acts 5 who had gone around preaching the gospel boldly. They'd been put in prison for it. In prison, they still rejoiced. Miraculously, an angel opened the prison doors and out they went and they continued to preach boldly. They were arrested again and after standing trial, they were whipped and then released. The Bible says as they left, they were rejoicing that they were worthy to be persecuted for Christ's name. And when you just look at that, their physical circumstances were terrible, having just been whipped, but yet in their heart and in their spirit, they were rejoicing. And so we can see how when physical circumstances are terrible, we can still have wonderful and be in a wonderful spiritual state. And even when our, our physical circumstances are good, that doesn't mean spiritually we are always good. This, I want to get on to the next point, the next challenge that I want to give, a New Year's resolution that I hope 
that we'll all do together. And that's seek God in all circumstances. We've established God is always good. Circumstances always vary. And now I want to challenge you to seek God in all circumstances. I'm going to use another story from Acts to illustrate somebody who was in the worst of circumstances and yet saw God and experienced his great fullness and glory. This is a story of Stephen. Now, if this particular story of the stoning of Stephen was made into a movie, it would definitely be PG-16 for violence because in some ways it's a brutal murder of a person. But on the other hand, it's also a glorious graduation from earth into heaven. And let's read it now just to, just to get the full picture of what was happening here. In Acts 7 verse 54, the Jewish leaders were infuriated by Stephen's accusation and they shook their fists at him with rage. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed steadily into heaven and saw the glory of God. And he saw Jesus standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. And he told them, look, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. Then they put their hands over their ears and began shouting. They rushed at him and dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. His accusers took off their coats and laid them at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they stoned him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He fell to his knees shouting, Lord, don't charge them with the sin. And with that, he died. A brutal killing and a brutal death. But on the other hand, a glorious graduation. And uh, somebody might say, can you imagine what Stephen was, was, was thinking and experiencing during this time of him being stoned? Do you know, he wasn't thinking about himself. He was thinking about the people. He said, Lord, don't charge them with his sin. He clearly knew Jesus because that's almost exactly what Jesus said when he was on the cross. Lord, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And he saw Jesus during this time. And although it should have been a traumatic time, it was a wonderful, glorious time. He saw Jesus standing to receive him and welcome him into heaven. Now, thankfully, we don't have to live through and go through these kind of terrible circumstances every day. Many days are, are normal days. And I, and I want to just talk about normal days because... Uh, um, that's the most part. There's some very good days, some very bad days, and, and many normal days. So I want us to look at how we can seek God in the average, in the normal days. So I've got a, if you look at this pie chart that I've, I've created, it, it illustrates a normal 24-hour day. And you'll see that about a third of the day we sleep out of 24 hours. We often work for about a third of the day. And the rest of the day is divided into eating chores, some recreational sport, some family time, and hopefully some time with God. Now, I would like to, I'd like to suggest that um, this could be a day, but we need to prioritize what are the most important things. And if we were to prioritize a day, I think most Christians would say, yes, definitely God is number one and should be number one in my day. And then family should be number two. And so we make a list, but I want, I want us to look at it slightly differently today. You see, if we make a list and God is item number one and family is item number two, it can have some problems. So I want to suggest that God should not be item number one on our list. I want to suggest that God shouldn't even be on our list. What I want to suggest is that your list should be in God and that God should be part of each item on your list. And so as you go throughout your day, you live each part with God relying on his guidance and, and letting him give you insight into fulfilling your purpose in him. So I'd like to suggest a slightly different model. And that's one of a wheel broken into segments, but each one can be a spoke. And so as the wheel turns, as you roll through your day, there's a, 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 a you're active on one part of your day as that's the part that's touching the ground. But God's not one of those segments that will just touch the ground at some part of the day. God's the axle that each spoke leans against. And we rely on him to be with us in each part of every day. And I believe that's what God really wants for us, to live life with him, not just have him as a small part of our life and that we can seek him in each and every part of each day. Now, some people might say, well, if, if I'm 
if God's with me all day, every day, does that mean I'm praying all day, every day? Does that mean God's sort of watching what I'm doing and I, I, and I shouldn't really go on social media? What I want you to understand about God being with you every, each and every day, He's seeing what you do anyway. But I want you to understand God's desire for you is only good. God loves you and He only wants what's best, best for you. He always has, He does right now, and He always will. Everything God commands, asks, requires is for your benefit. It's also for the benefit of others in his kingdom, but most of all, it's for you. And remember, God is more concerned about your eternal well-being than he is about your current physical comfort. Now, some people think we pray for God's sake. But I want to let you know, God doesn't ask us to pray for his sake because he needs prayer. He asks us to pray for our own sake. It's a way of us putting our minds on him and looking to his goodness. The Bible tells us to worship God, but I can assure you God doesn't need your worship. He has angels worshiping him day and night. He doesn't need your worship. He tells you to worship him so that your priorities are correct and that you don't end up worshiping things of this world. So worshiping him is getting your priorities right. The Bible tells us to give and to tithe, but I can assure you, God doesn't need your money. He can turn water into wine. He can turn stone into gold. We don't tithe for, for God's economy. We tithe for our own economy. Loving others is as much uh, uh, for, for you as it is for them. Honesty, integrity, and purity are more for you than, than they are for God and for others. As parents, we know what's best for our kids and we try and get them to eat their vegetables and wear a hat. And they often think that they're doing it for our sake. They don't realize we're doing it for their long-term good. And as a school teacher, I often have to marvel when we give kids homework, they think we give them homework because we enjoy marking homework. The truth is, is we're giving it to them for their good. And everything that God requires of us and instructs us to do is for our good not for his benefit, even though it does benefit others and his kingdom, but it's primarily for our good. Now, that takes me to the next point. So the first challenge was seek God in all circumstances. And the second one is live your purpose through all circumstances. Now, I just want to make, I just want to for a moment just recognize that some people may be right now going through some tremendously difficult circumstances. And I don't want to make like this is just a quick formula that you can just apply and all your circumstances will instantly become right. That's, and, I, and I want to say God is there. If you seek him, you will find him. But there are also people who are willing to walk this road for you. And, and I encourage you, if you're going through particularly difficult circumstances, please make contact with someone at the church. Let them pray with you and walk a road with you. So now, my second challenge for 2021, live your purpose through all circumstances. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 16, that is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long, yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now, rather we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things that we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. I want to say this, with God mountains don't go away, but climbing over them does get much easier. No matter what circumstances you are in, you can live through each day with purpose, knowing that in God you can rise above every physical circumstance. Now, someone who's a great example of living their purpose through all circumstances is Joseph in the Bible. Now, you'll know that God had given Joseph dreams of his ultimate purpose when he was still a young boy, dreams that he would lead a nation. But before that happened, his brothers, who were very jealous of him, decided that they were going to kill him. Then after some debate, they rather decided to sell him as a slave into Egypt. He was a slave for years. And then... He was falsely accused and sent to prison for years. After that, he was identified by Pharaoh as a, as a great leader through, through um, God's provision. And, and then 
ultimately fulfilled his true purpose. But I just want to read from Genesis 45 verse 4, the way Joseph looked at his life when he looked back on the different circumstances in his life. This is the time when his brothers came to Egypt looking for food and and, and they met with Joseph. In, In Genesis 45 verse 4 it says, Joseph said to them, I'm your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here. Because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now, there has been famine in the land. And for the next five years, there will be no plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, Lord over his entire household and ruler over Egypt. Joseph had to live through many physical unpleasant circumstances before living his purpose. So right now when he met with his brothers, he was living his purpose, leading Egypt and the known world. But what I want to highlight is he was a slave for many years. During the time when he was a slave, he had to live with the slaves in the slave quarters. But as a slave, He displayed leadership ability, so much so that Potiphar, his master, recognized his leadership and made him a leader over the other slaves. And he lived his purpose as a slave. He was then falsely accused and went to prison. But while in prison, he faithfully did whatever it was he needed to do. And the the person in charge of the prison recognized his leadership and made him head over all the other prisoners. And so he even lived out his purpose in prison. And then... When he was finally recognized by Pharaoh as as a great leader and Pharaoh made him in charge of all Egypt and gave him authority to to run his entire household and and, and at that point, in fact, the the, the full known world, Joseph ultimately did live his purpose, but he lived his purpose in every circumstance before he ultimately lived his true purpose. I want to also just look at a scripture that for me is incredibly meaningful. It's Matthew 26. It's, it is the, the, the part of scripture where Jesus is being betrayed by Judas and about to be taken, to be whipped and then crucified. And what I, what I really love about this passage of scripture is it really highlights a, a current circumstance, a spiritual truth, but then also somebody about to live their purpose. So let's read from Matthew 26 and verse 47. And even as Jesus said this, Judas, one of the 12 disciples, arrived with a crowd of men armed with swords and clubs. From verse 50, Jesus said, my friend, go ahead and do what you have come for. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. But one of the men with Jesus pulled out his sword and struck the high priest's slave, slashing off his ear. Put away your sword, Jesus told him. Those who use the sword will die by the sword. Don't you realize that I could ask my father for thousands of angels to protect us and he would send them in an instant. But if I did, how would the scripture be fulfilled that describe what must happen right now? So we see there's a, in the physical, there's a crowd of men that have arrived with swords and clubs. They've grabbed Jesus and they're about to arrest him. This looks like a pretty difficult and tough circumstance to be in, a very dangerous one. But Jesus highlights the spiritual reality. He says, I could ask my father and there'd be thousands of angels here to save me in a moment. But I'm not going to use those angels to get us out of this physical circumstance because I need to live my purpose through the circumstance so that I can fulfill my ultimate purpose. Let's look at the spiritual realities here. It might look in the physical that Jesus was in danger, but the truth is Jesus was in fact the safest person at that very moment. He had thousands of angels at his disposal. The people who were truly in danger were these men with their clubs and swords. In the physical, it may look like Judas had just betrayed Jesus unto death, but the truth is Judas had just betrayed himself unto death. And it may look like Jesus was about to physically die. But the truth is, spiritually, he was creating eternal life for each and every one of us. And if you've never accepted this eternal life that Jesus made possible, I want to encourage you to make contact with someone at the church right now so that they can tell you some more about it. I want to thank you for being 
part of the service today. And just in ending off, I just want to reca- recap. The first two truths that I want us to always remember is God is always good. Circumstances always vary. And He's always good even when circumstances are not good. And then my two challenges for you for this year, and I hope you make them as New Year's resolutions for yourself. Seek God in all circumstances and live your purpose through all circumstances. Let's just close off in prayer. Father God, even though this year seems like it's starting under terribly difficult circumstances, I want to thank you that we know that you are good despite any of the circumstances. And Father, I pray that you'll be with us and help us and give us the strength to seek you in all circumstances. And Father, I pray that you'll help us to live our purpose through all circumstances. Amen. May you have a blessed 2021 and we look forward to seeing you online next week. Thanks, Mike, for that word. We do want to celebrate God's goodness despite the clouds that we are facing. So yes, as Mike said, if anyone would like to reach us, reach out to some of the leaders and the pastors, please would you do so. You can contact us through our website or our email address. The details are all on our website. We'd love to encourage you and support you during this time together. Well, I forgot to mention that it was Shailene's birthday today. So happy birthday, Shailene. We trust you have a great day. And for the rest of you, enjoy this lockdown period with your family. Um, Enjoy the time together. And we look forward to seeing you online next week. Same time, same place. Cheers. Thank you for joining us for our online sermon. If you feel that God spoke to you during the message and you'd like to respond in any way, then I just want to remind you that our pastors are waiting for you to connect with them. They'd love to pray with you and encourage you in your walk with Jesus. Hope you have a great week and we hope to see you again as we faith journey together.